What's up guys, this is Hot Eyed 7 RCT. Let me bring down the music here. Alright guys, this is gonna be a first, hopefully in a series of videos that I'm gonna be doing called Unfiltered. Where basically without editing, uh, no editing, no fancy stuff. Uh, you guys know me, uh, the, the ones of uh, who've been uh, to my streams and, and checking my channel and stuff know that I'm a very down to earth kind of person. Gamer for a long time, old school gamer. And so I just wanted to bring a little bit of that into a what I'm trying to make a, for, a new format for specific topics in the gaming industry, which I'm calling Unfiltered. Now, Unfiltered, basically the concept is having something more akin to a, let's say, a video call kind of format where I'm not going to be stopping for anything. So all the mistakes, everything, uh, bear with me. is going to be very raw, very crude. But I feel that this is the way, the best way to not only drive the point home of the topic that I'm going to be discussing. Uh, today's topic, of course, is going to be very short about E3 2017. I know that everybody and their mother has already, at this point at least, uh, spoken and given their two cents about E3. However, I just wanted to chip in. Now, let me bring the music down. Let me do it around there in the background. All right. So, <clears throat> E3 2017 from the perspective, oh, by the way, hopefully you guys will like uh, the, the format for this series. No gameplay, no nothing, it's just, you know, a few minutes of your time talking about certain topics which I'm going to be uh, advertising ahead of time. But, of course, none of the stuff, uh, the opinions that I'll be expressing here have anything to do with they're not sponsored, they're not like paid for, there's no Doritos and Mountain Dew or none of that crap. That being said, I want to bring my own two cents on E3 from the point of view of a old school gamer. There's seven, several brackets here. Um, I consider myself an old school gamer from the very beginning. The kind of gamer that has seen the industry grow. Um, the kind of gamer that's not wooed by big marketing campaigns and stuff like that and can usually see through the veil of marketing bullshit. Uh, I do have favorites, of course, but I am not tied or married to anyone in specific because if not, that would limit my, my chances of enjoying a breath of, you know, variety. So basically... I play all. I play all. I see. It's, at least considering that, since I'm not a movie star, I'm not a millionaire, and none of that stuff. I gotta work hard. Which, by the way, I, after I finish this video, I gotta go, you know, sleep a little bit and then go to work during the night. So I'm gonna just try to keep it short. E3 2017. Okay. My point today. I've seen a lot of people uh, doing grading systems on the on the E3 this year. And to be honest, right off the bat, off the cuff, from Saturday that started the, 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 the E3, um, I think it was the 11th, to me it felt up to a certain point, it was very, very boring, to be honest. I was, I didn't get a chance to see everything live, and because I've been working, but to be honest, I, I think it's the best thing that happened because if I would have had to go through all of that live presentation from all of the different companies, I would have been pretty upset. Now, don't get me wrong, there was a lot of little stuff here and there that was pretty cool. But overall, I feel like E3 is going back to a, a certain time where it's time to stagnate again. Like people are trying to find their direction, like they don't know where to go next. And a lot of that, in my opinion, I think it has to do with the, the focus on hardware, you know, that, that's been going on for the past, what, eight, nine, ten years already? Um, at least on the console side of things. Because PC, you know, yay, PC Master Race, it's always been about hardware. But we're already used to that. We, we love that. We look forward to every, you know, few months, have a new upgrade and stuff like that. So that's 
basically common for us. But when it comes to consoles, if you don't have like the games, the games to me is like the, the, the heart and soul of the whole thing. You know, if you don't have the games, it's not really there. Um, granted also that E3 usually, as you can see by all the YouTube videos, there has been a lot of cringeworthy past E3s with a lot of, you know, presentation stuff and set up scripted stuff that has gone really, really bad. But there has been also many other moments that have been really, really awesome, legendary even, um, without mentioning any company in specific. Now, what I'm going to do basically with E3 in order, in order for me to actually grade E3 and what they did for me, at, for me, at least on a consumer level, on a gamer level, not going again, not being sponsored or being a fanboy of a specific company. I have to be completely honest. If we go in order, we have what Electronic Arts. Electronic Arts has been, I have to confess, and maybe there's a little bit of bias here, has been a thorn on my side for, oh my God, the so long. I think the last full game that I bought, I purchased from Electronic Arts was Crisis 3. I go on record, I say it. Uh, Electronic Arts has been doing a lot of shady stuff, but that's topic for some other time. The thing is that from Electronic Arts, there's very few that I can remember, Remember, um, to be honest. Uh, maybe Battlefield? Yeah. Out of the top of my head. And that's the point that I'm trying to make here. I'm not going to look for a script. I'm not going to look for a list and start going bullet point through everything that went through the show. Or highlighting none of that stuff. I'm just gonna shoot out what I remember. I remember Battlefield. I remember what else? What else? That's what stands out because I'm not really a sports gamer. I'm not really into that stuff. So that's basically a huge chunk of what EA represents. So yeah, not not much really on on that front. So yeah, let's give to uh, Bethesda. Bethesda had the Switch Skyrim, which looked kind of interesting. It had the Fallout VR, and they have a whole bunch of other stuff in VR, and they were really, really pushing for the VR stuff. A lot less uh, cringeworthy this year. Kind of, kind of better than last year's. And of course, Todd Howard was not there, which was a huge plus. Um, let me see what else we have uh, Microsoft now Microsoft to be honest um, a lot of people well of course you're gonna find if you go on the internet and you look for depending on where you look you're gonna find fanboys on Sony side who's gonna rag on Microsoft and then Microsoft ragging on the Sony side but to be honest Microsoft I felt was very subdued well actually all E3 2017 was basically subdued version of past years glory years I guess but Microsoft's one was a lot less flair and more a little down to earth if that's even possible with Microsoft they had the Xbox One X which still has at a hard way at a hard oh my god hardware uh, level is very intriguing to me. I love hardware. I build custom PCs and yeah, I, I like the what what on a hardware level the design is doing for a console. There's a lot of uh, first time things, you know, uh, innovative things going in there. However, I still have not seen a compelling game to make me want to go out and pre-order this or even look forward to buying it as of yet. Uh there was a barrage of games going on that they were showing but again it was it looked to me kind of like filler at this point there's no killer app and in my opinion i think they need something along the lines of a crisis type series that you know that really shows off the power of the system in order to you know to sell the biggest selling point which is the power of the system um Ubisoft, on the other on the other hand, I was pleasantly surprised by Ubisoft because not only did they open with a Switch game, a Nintendo Switch game, which was one that was heavily rumored, but 
I was expecting Aisha Taylor and some other crazy 30 minute dance dance stuff and it was actually pretty cool. They had back to back uh, cool games. There's another entry in the Assassin's Creed and I saw a lot of stuff here and there. I can't remember out of the top of my head. That's why I wanted to do this because most people are not going to remember most of the stuff that came out on the E3 unless you're a specific fan of a specific franchise. Now, Sony, on the other hand, that one was almost, I think, two hours long or hour and a half long, and I had to basically kind of like fast forward because there were certain parts that I really... Highlights, uh, God of War. God of War, I think, was the best thing that I saw from there and actually exclusive. Not many exclusive. It wasn't really heavy hitting. I noticed also that it was pretty tamed down. It was like everybody was on on downers, basically. Uh, Sony's crowd, specifically, they were like really, really tame. They were really quiet and like in constant expectation of the next big thing that Sony was gonna, you know, floor them, you know, heavily with surprises and stuff, and it quite didn't happen. Um, and then we go to Nintendo's presentation, which was heavily advertised as being, uh, in, in plenty of doom and gloom articles that were written days before of the E3, that it was gonna be extremely short, it was gonna be a a uh, direct that you know that not a lot of people was expecting much from Nintendo and the video rolled and yes it was a direct presentation but back to back oh my god I, I mean it was it was short of amazing I mean in terms of presentation it wasn't like the biggest thing ever I've seen Nintendo do really really much better and in and presenting live but to be honest, I felt like Nintendo's presentation, for some reason, did not insult my intelligence and did not waste my time. I go in E3 as a spectator to, you know, find out what kind of games and I'm, am I going to be playing in the next few months or next few years, even, depending on how long it's going to take for a project to get done. And I can remember... Unlike the other companies, I can remember out of the top of my head a whole bunch of games that I want to play from there. You got the Mario and Rabbids. You got the... That was already presented, of course. You have the Yoshi one and um, and Metroid. Metroid. I mean, Metroid. A lot of questions there, but they delivered a teaser. It was just a logo, but it did so much. And it, it harkened back to the SNES days where you were just, you know, it was like back-to-back, -back, really top, solid hits. Um, not only that, I saw from their presentation that most of these games, with the exception maybe of Yoshi, Kirby, and Metroid, that all these games were going to be playing this year. So that's a big plus on my side. I, hey, I mean, I even got um, arms in the mail. And I'm not going to even be able to try it today because I have to go to work, like I said, when as soon as I finish this. But it was really refreshing to see that, again, Nintendo went in this year as the underdog because last year they were criticized heavily because all they had was Zelda on the show. And we all know how that turned out and how the game turned out. So, yeah, it, things are starting to look up, at least on Nintendo's side. And I don't know, after everything that I've said, I hope that you already have taken uh, or gotten an idea of which one I like the best. Uh, there's still plenty of more games that weren't covered in that Nintendo presentation, but overall I feel that theirs, to me, were the most appealing. Uh... I know a lot of you gamers out there are not going to take me seriously because, yeah, you're going to be on one side, either Microsoft side or Sony side, but to be honest, I really don't care <laughs> um, because everybody's entitled to their opinion, and this is basically an opinion. Now, one thing I wanted to, to say before I go, 
And remember, this is all very experimental. I just wanted to, this is a, a first in a series that I hopefully, if you like, if you have anything to comment on the E3 2017, please do it down below as you like and subscribe, I hope. Um, one thing I wanted to point out specifically where uh, Metroid Prime is concerned, I even posted uh, during the presentation, I posted on, on, on Twitter, something that I noticed on the, on the logo, something that I think it, it was more like my mind playing tricks on me, but as a what if scenario, it would have been kind of cool that that little either, which I still don't know if it's a Samus S logo in the background before the four comes out in that little tiny video teaser of Metroid uh, Prime 4, it kind of looked like Factor 5 in the background, kind of, I wish it was Factor 5 because I read somewhere that Factor 5 for some reason is alive and kicking somewhere and they're actively working. It would be really, really awesome. Can you imagine the possibilities of having uh, part or most of the crew from Factor 5 working on Metroid Prime 4? That would be amazing. I mean, they, they, they took the GameCube's the GameCube with their uh, Star Wars games and raise it, raise the bar basically on, on in terms of graphics of what that machine could do. So much so that I believe that it was even all the games that came after and those were launch games basically. Um, it was very hard to surpass. So I can imagine if they do the same thing with Metroid. But of course that is wishful thinking on my side because there's nothing legit to actually. Um, you know, say that they are working with uh, on Metroid Prime. It's just something that I hope that it would be true. Hopefully, the new team that's working on the on the series is uh, very good. If it's handpicked by Nintendo, I'm guessing that it, it will be. Uh, bonus, of course, we have the Metroid on the 3DS, which I'm very much looking forward to. And if you notice that I haven't spoken only. Uh, in terms of E3, only I has only spoken about Nintendo games is because basically, for me, most of the stuff that I'm really interested in from the other camps, let's say Ubisoft and Microsoft and stuff, I can already you know look forward to them to play them on ultra settings, 4K on my PC. So it's not something that it, I'm going to look forward to it, but it's not something that really stands out when it comes to uh, console gaming in, in, in general. But yeah, I mean, you guys give me your opinion. What do you think about E3 2017? Um, I'm sorry I made this kind of short and kind of out there, but I wanted to make it kind of like a one-sided conversation. I wish I had more input um, from your side of things. So leave a comment down below. Uh, let me know if you like the format for specific topics, which uh, starts with this one, unfiltered. So hopefully you like it and like and subscribe. And I see you guys soon, probably with the uh, arms stream. And then from there, I got to go and do another stream for you guys. Uh, shoot them up, surprise shoot them up that I think you're going to love. So you guys take care. I got to get out of here. I got to take a shower and eat something and go to work. See you guys later. Take care. Bye.